Fantasy Ed with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville of FantasySixPack.net and joining me shortly, Jonathan Chan, also of FantasySixPack.net. Kevin is not with us once again this week. Uh, hopefully, uh, he'll be back next week to uh, pr- provide us with his wisdom. Uh, but, Jono, we're here. We're ready to do it. And uh, how was your weekend uh, in fantasy? Oh, awful. Terrible. Just just the worst. Awful. Could not have had a worse week. Why? What happened? It was, oh, uh, uh, Metcalf Wilson. Yeah, I had them. I, I have no, no part of Russell or Metcalf. Just oh. everybody else was garbage. But on the plus side, the Patriots beat the Ravens, so I can't complain. Well, that's a big uh that's a big deal. Um yeah, in our in our league though, in our league you did well. You've got uh, you've got that you got a better stack than me. I do have to K Metcalf and Russellson and you've got a better combo. Kyler yeah. Murray. <laughs> and and as luck would have it, DeAndre Hopkins. Could you well we'll talk about those two a little, little bit later, but uh let's get on with the news since the Sunday games and uh, the injuries and whatnot. Um Drew Brees benched himself in the second half of the 49ers games. It was people were wondering whether it was Peyton, but it didn't look like Peyton wanted him to uh to uh, stay off the field, but Brees pulled himself and uh apparently and it's turned out that he's got uh, uh, broken ribs and uh, could be out for a while. Jono, um, people are running out to get Jameis Winston, but uh, Peyton hasn't made a decision yet. Could could it be Taysom Hill? I don't think so. I, th- I think it's got to be Jameis, right? Yeah, Pey- Peyton's, there's a lot of, like, he's, it, Peyton never actually gives you an answer. He's going to keep teasing Taysom Hill just to, you know, keep keep the next week's team off balance, but it's Jameis. If Hill goes in there, it's going to be, you know, his classic Wildcat, whatever, the occasional throw, but the main quarterback, the man making the passes, will be Jameis Winston. Yeah, would there be a way, like, I, you know, Taysom Hill is an interesting guy. Everybody in fantasy knows him, but you can't own him. Everybody knows how good he is. What position could he play that you could actually pick him up and start him? Is there any... I believe he qualifies as tight end in ESPN leagues. So uh, this week, you know, if he... I, I don't play ESPN, but... If he does actually qualify at tight end in ESPN leagues, you should probably add him and play him this week because I get the feeling he's gonna he's gonna get some of those trick plays at the near the goal line or maybe you know some something where he's gonna score more points than he normally would with Breeze in there. So yeah, if, if there's a week to do it, this this would be the this uh, this would be the time. I, I could um, I think we could even see a a timeshare quarterback where Taysom Hill gets a little bit more snaps as QB than he usually does. I think that's a possibility too. But you can't you can't argue the arm of uh, James when he throws a lot of interceptions. Though. But anyways, we'll see how that all works out. But uh, Breeze out for his week. And uh, so go pick up uh, Jameis Winston, not Taysom Hill. I mean, I two fractured ribs and a collapsed lung. Yeah, he's out for multiple weeks. Yeah. I don't see him playing for a while. No, a collapsed lung. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about the collapsed lung part. Um, Jordan Howard um, released a uh, free agent. Um, so um, I think that has a lot to do with solving Ahmed. So, so um, obviously, everyone who saw anything of the Dolphins this weekend could see that Salvin Ahmed, um, one of these undrafted uh, undrafted free agent. I'm not even sure if he's a rookie. Is he? Um, I think he's been around the league. I actually don't know, but he played well. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Yeah, you're picking him up. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, Jordan Howard. Um, do you think anybody, any team, could be interested in Jordan Howard? I mean, sure. I'm sure there are some teams that need, you know, a uh, off the bench goal line kind of running back. I'm sure somebody's going to pick him up. Uh, he hasn't been, you know, efficient at all this year with the Dolphins. But again, he's a decent goal line guy or a, you know, third running back practice squad kind of guy. He's not the worst running back in the world, and <coughs> some somebody no. will add him. There was a there was a time that Jordan Jordan Howard was hot fantasy property. And those days are are long gone. But uh, I yeah I have to agree with you. I just don't see him just see him being uh, uh, kind of roster backup. You know, um, he's definitely not going anywhere where he's going to get fantasy relevant touches. We can no. probably leave it at that. So, but but I don't know. I I don't think there was a, actually a better. 
uh, offense for him to uh, to have shone. I mean, everyone thought that he could be the lead back with uh, Matt Breda back at, when the season started, but that just didn't. That just wasn't going to happen. But yeah, Jordan Howard. Um, yeah, uh, don't forget to drop him if he's still if he's still somewhere got cobwebs on your on your bench somewhere. But uh, make sure you drop him and pick up some somebody new. Um, Teddy Bridgewater. <clears throat> knee injury no structural damage day to day um i don't know much about the backup the backup's kind of a uh a weird guy who played a, a, i don't know something like an arena league or something i don't know who hey the, that's pj P. walker that is xfl mvp P. Uh, J. Walker. Uh, xfl yeah not not uh, arena well i knew it was something I, th- I knew it was a down list league but uh that's yeah that's houston roughnecks mvp PJ Walker. Uh, he led the league in passing yards and touchdowns before the league before the league shut down for COVID. So you know he's not he's not not talented. Um, he. I don't know I why mean, they had. They didn't really have to shut down the league. They could have just run it. <laughs> oh, there no, wouldn't have been any fans. There wouldn't have been any fans there anyway. <laughs> no, there were plenty of fans there. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. Um, anyway, so but turned out to be a non-starter so i don't know maybe sometime in the future uh the xfl but no new league startups in the foreseeable future um christian mccaffrey uh injury absence extended at least another week uh, boy it's pretty frustrating for uh owners of christian mccaffrey i mean it's just like i mean you you draft a, you draft him you draft like saquon barkley these these guys are like top this is the guy you want on the field and we, we talked about him last week where they should scale back his touches and stuff and uh you know this is, this is what happens, uh, John. It's, it's not good, is it? Nah, freak shoulder injury. Took a bad hit. That wasn't. A, I don't think that was an overuse injury whatsoever. He took took a bad hit to the shoulder. It happens. This wasn't a. You know, if he had ten fewer carries, he would have gotten. He wouldn't have gotten hurt. Like this was just one of those plays. You get tackled, you get hurt. All right, and uh, moving right along, uh, I just caught a little bit of news that Tyler Lockett slight knee sprain, but. It wouldn't be a problem if the Seahawks were playing on Sunday, I don't think. But they play on Thursday, so he might be uh, limited or out. Uh, you got to closely monitor this situation. If he does sit out, um, who's going to play on the other side of DK? David Moore, probably. Um, he's been the third guy, uh, good for a couple of big plays uh, a year. And that's, yeah, probably probably David Moore. Uh, decent low-end flex, I would say, would you spot, uh, if, he, if he plays. We're, we're worth a spot start. Eh, depending on the depth of your league, um, I don't think he's going to get a ton of like he's not going to get locket targets. Um, but uh, he's you know solid if you if you're in a deeper league or you have a you know a bye week fill in or, or a couple of injuries you need to fill in for. Uh-huh. If Lockett doesn't play, then there are definitely worse options than uh, than Moore, who's playing alongside Russell Wilson. And finally, uh, on the list, I don't know if I will. I'll ask you if you've caught anything else, and uh, because I I drew up the uh, the news um, considerably earlier than usual, so I might have missed other items that have come up since I did this. Um, Drew Locke, uh, rib injury, chance he won't play. Uh, I I know you put him forward as a uh, as a streamer, and he was looking good as a streamer until this weekend, and uh, I don't know, the wheels fell off, and Drew Locke didn't look very great. So yeah. I didn't think the Raiders were going to absolutely destroy him like that. That was not foreseen. Oh, well. yeah. But uh, I'll tell you, he, he had a better fantasy score than Baker Mayfield. I mean, Locke didn't play in torrential rains. But, well, yeah, yeah, it was a, yeah. Yeah, it was, he didn't play with 50 mile an hour winds and torrential downpour. It was downpour. windy. It was can, windy. Uh, can, uh, yeah, I think we can we can give Baker a pass for that one. He okay. didn't play badly. They just handed the ball off 45 times. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, the the two big boys from Ole Miss were were shut down this weekend. Only only uh, 2.6 and 3.8 fantasy points between them. Um, that's, that's that's pretty bad. Um, I was quite amazed at Jalen Ramsey how he was able to shut down uh, Metcalf this weekend. Um, pretty uh, pretty good job. And I think it says a little bit about Metcalf that he's uh, he still has a little bit to learn about being in the NFL about how to beat how to how to beat the good ones. He can beat the he can beat the almost good ones, but the but the good corners eh, he needs he's going to have to get a little more experience, I think. And AJ Brown, I don't know what happened with him. Do you? Uh the Titans played bad. <laughs> Just the, the the Titans passing game was bad, and I believe Brown dropped what would have been a 70 plus yard touchdown. Oh, that's right. Um yeah, so 
that it would have been a, a great day, but yeah, big drop there. Uh, and the Titans looked really bad. Okay, and a couple of other bad fantasy scores. These are just selected bad fantasy scores. There's, a, there's lots of others, but I just picked some notable ones. James Conner, what's he doing in the offense of the Steelers? Um, all three of the big the big three receivers on the Steelers got um, um, 10 targets, buckets of yardage. Uh, each one of them got at least one touchdown. I think Clay, Claypool got two. So um, James Conner is kind of like uh, the odd man out. Yeah, Big Ben looks like he's stat padding. Just you're hearing all these things about how bad the weather uh, was for that Pittsburgh-Cincinnati game. And then all of a sudden, Ben comes out and throws like 45 passes and Connor rushes the ball like, what, 10 times? It was just just ridiculous uh, throwing, targeting each of the receivers 10 times and not running it when they're up by like 25 points. Just pure and plain old stat padding against the against the bad team. It's pretty nice, though. I mean, nice of them. He, he likes your fantasy team. He wants to make sure that everybody who owns one of those receivers gets some. <laughs> what about us James Conner owners, huh? What about us? <laughs> no, I know you deserve something, too. Maybe next week. Maybe next week. Jared Cook got nothing. Two targets, um, sort of touted as a TE1, and, well, it's been two weeks. Um, he had that bad fumble in... Uh, in the Buccaneers game, which was a big blowout, uh, he was struggling to get a touchdown, and he fumbled the ball, and he's he's sort of fallen. Is is he off the radar? Or is he going to come back? Uh, I don't think you say he's off the radar, but yeah, it's been disappointing for sure. But he, I'm sure he'll come back at some point when everybody's already benched him or dropped him. <laughs> mm. Hey, right, let's look at our top fantasy scores, and it's kind of surprising was to who's who was at the top. Tom Brady. Well. He did come back, didn't he? Came back from a bad, bad, bad game. One of his worst of his career, and comes up with one of the best. That's just that's Tom. That's Tom for you, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he's still good. <laughs> you don't really notice the age thing with him. Uh, the weapons he has doesn't hurt, but like way to bounce back. He had, you know, everything was working crisp. He got everybody involved, uh, and you know, Ronald Jones running for just under two hundred yards didn't hurt either. So uh, it was a good day all around for the Bucks. Yeah, it was. Uh... Definitely unforeseen that Ronald Jones would uh, carry the rock that much. I, you know, I, in my, uh, I want to apologize to people. My weekend preview, I was decide, I was debating about which which of the two was the better start, and uh, I chose for an unfortunate. I want to apologize to people. I mean, I didn't know. I mean, I even mentioned that in my article too, that I wasn't sure if it was going to be uh, Ronald Jones or Leonard Fournette. Um, you, you can't really pick them week to week. Um, no. Even early in the game, everybody was like, as soon as Jones fumbled, everybody was like, oh, here we go. It's four net game. And then Jones was just given another 20 carries. So who knows? Oh, uh, Mr. Boom Bust. Marquez Valdez Scantling tops the list. <laughs> Don't you uh, just hate? Don't you just hate that guy? So irritating. You start like you start him. He'll catch two passes for ten yards, and then you bench him, and he well, what was what was this game? One hundred and twenty something yards on four catches or something like that. Just insane. Um, barring what uh, whatever Dalvin Cook uh, does for the rest of the game against the Bears tonight, Alvin Kamara will end up as top running back for week 10 uh kind of a normal guy that should be there obviously so. yeah it's not out of the ordinary for alvin Kamara to be uh to be the number one running back uh, he can he's, hold it i think he's hit 30 points in almost half his games this year or something crazy like that oh that's awesome um, awesome guy to have although this week's the the road to it this week was a little funny he only had uh 15 rushing yards and averaged under two yards a carry but scored three touchdowns so uh yeah that was fun. He had a before he his first touchdown. He was actually in the negatives in rush for rushing yardage, which wow. was interesting to see in the box score. <laughs> and finally, uh, blast from the past. Gronk, Gronk goes to uh, the top uh, for week ten. Um, do we consider him a? He's te one now, isn't he? Oh yeah, he he's te one for sure. Yeah. So um, those of you who picked him up and stashed him before the season and held on and and were patient got your reward and you had to be patient with gronk um it took a while for them to get the juices flowing didn't it yeah i mean i think gronk was just shaking off the rust for the most part um mm. but the last five weeks i want to say one two three four of the last five weeks he scored a b over 10 points in half ppr so he's been he's been good for sure oh well, it's time or 10 to... points in... sorry go ahead oh no no no, uh, uh, the points and standards, excuse me, for the last for the last five weeks. So he's been playing very well. Yeah, he's been great. Uh, observations or 
what we learned this uh, over this what we took note of. Um, what did you notice this weekend, or what have you? What is your observation of of for week ten? Uh, yeah, this goes off the the Browns uh the Browns Texans game and Nick Chubb owners in particular. Um, the man came back from a torn meniscus, put up 124 yards and a touchdown, and everyone or fan his owners in particular on Twitter were just complaining and other profanity that I'm not going to use just that he didn't run in that last that last 50 yard run for a touchdown oh, yeah instead, that's right yes. instead he stepped out and won the and iced the game for his team instead of you know maybe accidentally pulling a Todd Gurley he actually won his team the game which is what NFL players should care about mm-hmm. and then he's just getting all this slander and all this crap on Twitter and it's like they don't play for your fantasy team yeah it's disappointing I'm a chub owner and I might lose because he did that but the Browns won the game. He did his job. And if he scores 18 points and you still lose, then maybe the rest of your team has a problem, not Nick Chubb. So You know what? I didn't check out all the howling that there must have been after that. I guess there was there a was lot. There was so of, much of it. There was, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, because uh, Chubb comes back. But, I mean, look, you're getting the yardage there. But, you know, it's true. We like the touchdown because... Um, the touchdown in fantasy is fist pump. And when you don't get the fist pump, you feel robbed, right? And when people don't get the... I mean, they see him running for the end zone, and then all of a sudden he, you know, he parks it at the one. It's like, oh. And, but on the other hand, uh, like I had a similar situation. I had uh, Todd Gurley, and Todd Gurley accidentally fell on. I thought, I, on the other hand, I thought that it was kind of like, eh, I don't know, he could get doghoused. That's, that's the kind of thing you get doghoused for, you know? And so I was a little worried on that front. Like, I could have maybe lived without the touchdown, but I don't know, it worked out, and he didn't get doghoused, so. And it's all it's all in the past, so I don't know. There's there's a big hate on for for Nick Chubb and, and Todd Gurley these days, but I, I think Chubb Chubb owner should be just happy that he's back. And but I mean Kareem Hunt wasn't really doing much in his absence, so. Mm. Uh, yeah, but you're right. Uh, fantasy managers, people are... Anyways, I noticed, uh, my, my observation is, uh, well, Russell Wilson has done it again. He's looked like the MVP through the first, uh, eight or nine weeks, and this week, I don't know, now Kyler Murray looks like he's gonna, is, is the front runner now, and once, once there's a new front runner, it's kind of hard to get it back. I'm sure Russell will try, but the MVP though is is a lot more of, not not so much about Russell, but I think it's a lot more to do about the people that are around him. And I'm not saying that he doesn't get the help that he needs or anything like that, but uh, yeah, it is tough. The the Rams do. Uh, I think he got sacked four times in that game, and it was really tough tough day for Russell. And but. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like the, the the team was was coming or was rallying around him. I think the I don't know. It, it seems like whenever they play the Rams, I don't know. It's never it's never joy for for Russell. He's always I never see him have a good game against when he's visiting the Rams. When the Rams come to Seattle, that's a little bit different. But I don't know. Uh, the Rams seem to have the Seahawks number a little bit. But uh, yeah, I, I, it just seems like uh, once again, I think I see. I, I'm I'm feeling that the MVP is slipping away from Russell. Don't you? Again? Yeah, I, I think it's a two horse race now. Russell, Russell, and Josh Allen have kind of very strongly fallen out of it, and now it's uh, it's Mahomes and Kyler Murray all the way for that for yeah. sure. And uh, moving on up, uh, I'm gonna start with moving on up. Uh, one of your favorite guys, or one uh, the guys you uh, recommended to pick up, and uh, this guy, Jacoby Myers. Believe it or not, uh, you know we talk about tears and fantasy football and stuff like that. Jacoby Myers is now he's gone from WR four, now he's the WR three, and I think, and I think it is even conceivable that Jacoby Myers even start. Entering the WR2-3, you know, he could start be moving into the WR2 area. If uh, you think it's possible, you think he could move into a, a, a higher tier than WR3 now? Because he's solidly in WR3 territory right now, for sure. But uh, He would need to start scoring touchdowns. Uh, he hasn't caught a touchdown yet in his career. Um, he would need to start, well, Cam would need to start passing it around the goal line instead of running it in, which you're not going to get with Cam. Um but at least we know Myers has a nice arm. Uh, I believe he's a former QB. Had that beautiful touchdown pass. Uh, absolute dime to Rex Burkhead. Yeah. Um, that's how he got his first touch, first career touchdown. <laughs> uh, 
but the volume is there. He is very, very clearly Cam's favorite target. Um, Cam actually coached him in one of the one of his youth leagues early in his career, so oh. they have a rapport. They've had a year, like years and years long rapport. Oh, uh, so they know each know other. They're comfortable with each other, and. Even when like Harry was back, I didn't even notice and kill Harry had come back until halfway through the first. It's like, oh, look, he's playing. He's still not doing anything. Yeah. Um, the only thing here is now when Edelman comes back, uh, he and Myers both play the slot. Um, and mm-hmm. it'd be interesting to see how Belichick puts them both in the game. But definitely, you have to say, though, Jacoby Myers, the floor is higher, way higher now. Oh yes, yes, definitely. He 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 is the the Patriots' best wide receiver, even when Edelman comes back, because Edelman's knees are just shot. He looks not like himself, uh, uh, he's and like, Myers what? is going to be the go-to guy. What is he? Thirty-three now. Yeah, he's getting up there. So, who's moving on up for you? Me, I uh, got Jalen Rager. A uh, little under the radar this week. Um, he only had forty forty three yards, I believe, but. Uh, he led the Eagles with seven targets. He was on the field for 88% of the team snaps, which was tied again for the team lead uh, among wide receivers with Travis Fulgham. And even with, you know, Alshon Jeffrey with Fulgham healthy, uh, Rager, you know, had a career high in targets and he caught his first career touchdown last week. So just building off of that, the Eagles are definitely looking to get the ball in his hands. They're going out of their way Mm -hmm. to try to get him the ball because they know he can create uh, and they want to use their first round pick as much as they can. So he might be able to slip onto the radar because he didn't have a big blow up game like some of the other uh, some of the other rookie receivers have had this year. So if you can sneak in, get him uh, without spending a lot of your budget or without using your waiver uh, priority, then that's definitely going to be a thing and a good thing to do because Rager has been injured. He hasn't had a lot of time to build a lot of rapport with Carson Wentz. But as the season goes on, he's just going to keep getting better and better. Mm. Is the Fulgham ride over? Um Fulgham as a wide receiver one is over, yes, just because now Goddard's back. They designated Ertz to return this afternoon, so he'll be back uh, at some point. Rager's here, Alshon Jeffrey's here, so just... And I believe Fulgham only had one catch uh, yesterday, yeah, one was, catch uh, on yeah, Sunday. He definitely, the, the volume went way down. Yeah. One and, catch uh, on five targets, so I think um, maybe teams are keying in on him. The Giants keyed on him, who keyed in on him, excuse me. But yeah, I think with with all the mouths coming back, I think they're going to start featuring Rager, uh, Rager more and more, probably to an even degree with Fulgham at the very least. I don't think Fulgham was a guy that you'd be trading. You know, he's not like he's not like a sell high kind of. He's not he's not like the, the usual tradable commodities, but. I don't know. We could, you could be. Uh, you definitely have a, uh, a decision to make whether whether to start him or, or not anymore. It's going to be tough uh, for him to, especially as you say, Jalen Rager definitely uh, moving on up. Continuing with you, Jono. Panic button. Who do you who do you who are you reaching for the panic button here? Uh, I'm going Jarvis Landry. Like I know it's probably past time to panic on him, but I gave him a pass over the last couple weeks with the injury to Odell Beckham. And he just hasn't, even with, you know, being the number one receiver, he hasn't done anything. He's only gone past 60 yards twice this season. Uh, yeah. He's yet to score a touchdown or a receiving touchdown. I know he threw a touchdown at some point this season, but he hasn't caught one yet. Um, he's just not, he looks hurt. Uh, he had, I know he had a hip issue earlier in the year. It doesn't look like he's fully back. Uh, only three catches, 29 yards yesterday. You figure a slot, you know, possession guy like Jarvis Landry would see a lot more in get short yard situations and with the wind and the rain it would be a lot of short passes to him but still no so if unless yeah. you're in you know a deeper ppr because he has a somewhat of a you know a floor as the as the wide receiver one for cleveland but it's getting bad yeah and i just wanted to uh point something else since we're since we're back talking about the browns and uh and nick chubb uh about that nick chubb touchdown he could have scored because uh it, it... oh yeah yeah no 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 he he was all by himself he had 35 yards of room between him but he purposely no, no, no. chose to uh, win the game for his team but no but i mean he could st- it still wouldn't have mattered because um it wasn't like uh um it would have put the the browns up uh more than a, more than just one score so it sort of yeah, didn't, but... so it sort of didn't make sense no ice the game of course it made sense you but, but you for don't sure to... ice the game and then instead of taking any chances yeah right. i guess i could take it down the field and get onside kick and some yeah football's crazy yeah you never know what could happen there's no 
but you can't say for sure what would have happened. Who knew the Lions no, were going to come back uh, against the Falcons like that? Yeah, all right. Like, you, you can't say for sure. And Chubb did what anybody should do, which is ice the game. Mm-hmm. Take the sure win instead of st- padding your own stats. Just wanted to add to that. Add that footnote. Uh, panic uh, for me is Michael Thomas. Now that Breeze is out, and he should have had a better game against the 49ers, I don't know why uh, he wasn't used very much. And it didn't look it didn't look great. I think he's got to be used a little bit more because I, I think uh, Traquan Smith got hurt, and it looked pretty bad. So, I mean, they've got no choice but to go to Michael Thomas. I don't know what is actually happening with Michael Thomas. I don't know why. I mean... I mean, you can say that Alvin Kamara owned the game. It was one of those games where it was Alvin's game, right? So uh, he, that's a funny thing, too. I always forget when uh, that uh, Kamara's first name is Alvin. I don't usually call him Alvin. <laughs> I'll call him Alvin this time. But anyways, Alvin had his day. And so maybe Michael Thomas, it's got to it's gotta turn around. Uh, somebody on Twitter um, is getting the dynasty people for Michael Thomas are getting a little bit nervous about whether they, you know, should maybe, uh, you know, thinking about trading and things like that uh you know are we are we there yet but i don't think we're there yet for that um but uh def- no in dynasty michael thomas is still you know one of the top receivers but man i draft him in in a couple of leagues and it's just you think you're drafting a safe receiver and even when he's not been hurt he's been garbage so there's no redeeming michael thomas this year unless he has some unspoken connection with Jameis winston that we're all expecting well, it's got to be something because it's it's got to turn around and it's got to turn around fast, or else people yeah. are going to or people are going to start souring on on Michael Thomas. It's this was the game where uh, I mean I do the rest of season rankings and I mentioned it in in the in my blurb there that uh, he had to do something this week or it's going to be a precipitous drop and it is it's going to be he's going to have to work his way back up. I can't I put him I he was currently at uh, rest of season five. He's going yeah, he's going to fall down. The ranks so anyways uh it's time for our favorite segment here it is mr unlimited you gotta be unlimited you gotta be and uh we've got the two guys and this is gonna be a hard choice for us isn't it um i mean i wanted to give it to kyler murray last week but he got edged out because he lost the game but he had a great game he got under rushing yards last game but he threw the pass and deandre uh, hopkins caught the pass and uh I might as well let the cat out of the bag. We both chose those two players to be Mr. Unlimited. And I want to make the case for Conway based on the simple fact that he could have had it last week if he'd won the game. He would have hands down won it. But Dalvin Cook won it the second time in a row. I know that's not really a good thing to go by, but Kyler Murray just over the past two weeks has just been solid. The, the top quarterback you want to own in fantasy right now. And uh, DeAndre Hopkins, like this week, you know, the big catch, I think seven catches, 120 odd yards or whatever. And the touchdown it was great. Um, but uh, my case is for Kyler Murray based on that. So are you going to, how are you going to make a case for DeAndre Hopkins? DeAndre Hopkins had a game winning touchdown catch in triple coverage in the end zone winning the game i think there are two receivers in the league that could have made that catch in that kind of coverage him and julio jones like just unbelievable getting up over three defenders including trey white who is yes those guys are good cornerback (laughs) two of them i don't know the third guy so much but uh, two of them are like those are Uh, it was i believe it was trey white micah hyde and micah hyde Hyde. he got over all three of those guys who are not bad defenders yeah Trey they're great one of the better cornerbacks in the league and yeah. just including you know the seven catches 120 yards game winning 40 yarder just incredible catch and again something that most receivers are not going to be able to come down with just incredible all the all the way around but um you still have to you still have to have the guy that delivers the mail though so who are uh... we going to decide on here Jono? we got to decide on somebody I mean, I picked last week since you, I, I, I picked since you disqualified yourself. So I think you can pick this week. All right. Well, yeah, it's a real, I want to say this right now to people that it is a real toss up. It is a real toss up for me. I was going to actually put DeAndre Hopkins as my choice. And if I put DeAndre Hopkins in as my choice, you would have put Kyler Murray. I'm pretty sure yes. you would. Yes. So, uh, so I think we'll go you with. You can give it to both. Do you want to share it? 
I think we should. Both. I think that's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. I liked it. I like the idea. Yeah, let's do it. Let's let's have it a a, a, a split decision this this week. Uh, since it was just a fantastic, fantastic hail mary, uh, one of the best I've seen. I mean, I know Rogers has had some really really good ones, but nothing like that. Like. Like just one guy, three defenders. This is magical, beautiful miracle uh, catch. Fantastic. So yeah, yeah. I like the idea. I like the idea. Uh, let's, That's let's, fun. let's do that. Let's do that. All right, now, Mister Unlimited. Richard, while you're typing that into our uh, our scoreboard, there, I want you to know that Cordero Patterson scored a touchdown. Oh, fantastic. not because he ran it in. But it was a 104-yard kickoff return. Oh. So it was not because he was getting touches or because he started, but because the Vikings special teams are garbage. Wow. So, so good start there. Okay. Well, I don't know. Some leagues you get the points for that. So. Well, you get the touchdown, not the yards. You get the touchdown point. You get the t- points for the touchdown, though. Right. Most leagues. Mm. Being kind of weird if you didn't. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, most. Yeah, I think. Well, yeah, if you. Yeah, do, yeah, I guess you do, don't you? Yeah, you get points for the for the touchdown, but you wouldn't get points for the yards. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, I'll have to check my. I'll see. See, I'll, I'm just gonna check my Scott Fishbowl. Just to anybody who's in Scott Fishbowl, then they can see. All right. No, While you're doing that, I didn't I'll get, get started the points. on the waiver wire. Okay, get started on the waiver wire. Uh, well, waiver wire QBs. We already talked about Jameis Winston. Hold it! Uh, hold it! Hold it! We have to seal the thing, the deal with uh, oh, with excuse Mr. me, Mr. Unlimited. Unlimited, gotta be unlimited. Mr. Unlimited, Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins share it. Okay, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yep. So waiver QBs, uh, we already talked about Jameis Winston, propensity to throw, got a good offense around him, obvious pickup. A sneaky pickup for QBs is Alex Smith. Um, made his first start in 728 days this past Sunday. Played well, uh, playing from behind, threw 55 passes, uh, completed 38 of them for 390 yards. Um, he's, you know, he's a safe QB. He's going to complete a lot of passes. He won't normally make a ton of mistakes, so he's got a decent floor. And he's got good weapons. He's got Terry McLaurin. He's got apparently the ultimate checkdown guy in JD McKissick, who saw another 14 targets this week. And, uh, Logan Thomas looks okay. Uh, as a tight end, uh, and Steven Sims uh, and Dontrell Inman will be back as well. So if you're in a league with kind of funky settings, uh, like Scott Fishbowl, as we were just talking about, with points per completion, uh, Alex Smith is a uh, very, very solid pickup. Or even in standard scoring with Superflex and two QB leagues, Alex Smith is a decent floor uh you know, option if you have injuries or, or bye weeks to deal with. Yeah, uh, definitely the rust is uh, off, isn't it? He's uh, he's looking good. He's looking good, really good. Losing effort, but it was nice to see Alex Smith uh, back and playing well. Um, I like the idea of uh, Logan Thomas, too, because uh, Alex Smith, uh, well-known, he used to like, uh, I don't know if you have Jordan Reed up there, too, who doesn't play with them anymore, but um, Jordan Reed used to be one of Alex Smith's favorite targets when he was on the team. So, um, But Logan Thomas, yeah, it, uh, definitely a good pickup because Alex Smith likes to end. So um, uh, let me see who you got. I got to pick up, uh, pick a, uh, a waiver wired receiver to talk about. Well, I, we, I, a guy I talked about as a spec ad last week was Michael Pittman. Pittman uh, looks like he's the number one guy if, uh, of the Colts and uh, didn't score a touchdown, but he, he had a 100 plus game and uh, definitely uh, a hot waiver wire pick for a wide receiver. Could be a league winner, this guy. Um, he's one of those, uh, I don't know, big size receivers are the in thing these days, wouldn't you say, John? <laughs> and, and he's one of those guys. Uh, what, he's 6'4, 220. He's like, you know, he's like one of these, you know, Metcalf, AJ Brown type, right? So, um, yeah, Pittman, uh, go out and grab him. Yeah, for sure. I mean, T.Y. T- 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 Hilton looks, uh, uh, you know, washed, not good anymore. Uh, Zach Pascal is just a guy with Paris Campbell injured. Pittman seems to be the uh, the number one, so it's good there. Yeah. Um, should he running back or another receiver? Yeah, pick another. All right, I'll go. Um, I'll go Keelan Cole just because we talked about Tim Patrick uh, a couple times already. I think I talked about him last week. Uh, Keelan Cole was a decent floor guy to start the year. Um, had you know consistent targets no fewer than five through weeks one to six uh bottomed out weeks seven and nine just two targets but bounced back this week had a pair of touchdowns uh one through the air and then one on a punt return which he made the punter look kind of (laughs) silly um which was great uh very fun highlight for me but uh he's back he had seven targets so it looks like with uh luton in there he's kind of 
picking things up again, getting the targets, and hopefully establishing himself. He's not going to be... He's not a ceiling guy. Cole's never been a, a, a no. ceiling guy, but PPR League's decent floor for a Jacksonville team that's going to have to throw like crazy, especially against Pittsburgh next week. So, I don't know yeah. if they have to throw like crazy. I mean, th- the running back is pretty oh, good. Oh, if Ben was stat patty in the rain against the Bengals, he's going to be stat patty against the Jags. Well, okay. But I, I'm a little bit of two minds about Keelan Cole because – it really doesn't seem like there's a there's a guy. I mean, like DJ Chark. Um, he, this was a game that should have been. I think he dropped a long pass too. Um, I think we talked about another uh, guy. It was AJ Brown dropped a long pass, and, and DJ yes. Chark is kind of like a uh, one of these. You know, he's a stud receiver supposedly, and I don't know. Keelan Cole. It, this was it was a boom game, but he's a boom bust guy. Um, to me, really. Um, but uh, yeah, I he's a touchdown. Kind of- he's like a touchdown guy. He's like a fifty yards, five catches, and then hope he gets a touchdown kind of guy. That's what yeah. Keelan Cole. Is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. From that point of view, I'm a, I'm I'm with you. All right. From that from that perspective. Um, w- before we move to running backs, uh, you've got Denzel Mims on there. Um. <laughs> Why Denzel Mims? Can you can you explain Denzel Mims? Is he he's not going in the article, is he? No, not this week, but he's been back 3 weeks. He's got at least 7 targets in two of those games. Uh no fewer than 42 yards. Um the Jets clearly want to use him and The Jets don't why not? score. <laughs> like they they clearly want to use him. He had 8 targets last week against the Patriots, 62 yards, um and then 42 yards exactly in each of the other, his first two games and he's still a rookie. So as he continues to improve and, you know, Flacco seems to want to throw it like crazy, then why not? If you're in a deeper PPR league, he's getting the targets and he's apparently has a decent yardage floor, so why not? Yeah, dig in. Um time for uh, a waiver running back. Uh, why don't you get us started? Start start with the big guy. Kalen Balaj? No, no. The, the, I'm starting with Kalen Balaj. The hot pick. Ah, uh, fine. Salvin do the hot, Ahmed. Uh, come on, do the hot pickup. Come on. Fine. Uh, Ahmed, as we talked about earlier, uh, kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, but with Matt Breida, with his hamstring injury, and Jordan Howard getting released, uh, he is in line for the uh lead back role with the Dolphins until Miles Gaskin comes back. Fortunately, Gaskin's not due back until week 12, so um is going to have at least uh one more week of starters touches with just Patrick Laird behind him, I believe, and Brita if he's healthy, but he had uh this week Ahmed was very clearly the starter, 84% of Miami's rushing attempts, uh 85 yards and a touchdown, uh, over 20 carries. So, you know he's going to be the guy. Um Breed, it doesn't seem like anything more than a change of pace. So, yeah, great pickup there, especially for this week against the Broncos, who just allowed uh, 200 rushing yards to the Raiders. Uh, Josh Jacobs and Devontae Booker had two touchdowns each on the ground. And, yeah, Broncos got destroyed. So if that is any indication of how the Dolphins' offense will go, then Salvin Ahmed is a great pickup uh, for Week 11, for sure. Uh, he is a rookie, by the way. Yeah, Congrats. I looked that up while we were talking before. <laughs> yeah, he is a rookie. And uh, hey, there's quite, quite a few diamonds in the rough uh, in, the, in the undraft free agents. There, there are uh, quite a few that are... Uh... You know that want the job, and I think that I think that always helps. I mean, you look back. I mean, Arian Foster was an undrafted free agent, and look at him. I mean, he was like he was fantasy gold at one time. Remember, uh, he used to get hurt a lot, though. I think after the first couple of seasons, then he started getting hurt stuff. But but anyway, um, yeah, it's good. there's a few nuggets out there from the undrafted free agent. It's been a pretty good year. A few of them are cropping up. Um, I am not gonna I'm not gonna talk about I talk about Caleb. You know what? I think you I have, have to talk. To- about Kalen Balazs. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'll talk about Kalen Balazs as much as as much as I detest, and I've got to I got to own up to the fact that you know Kalen Balazs, you know, did something on the Chargers, and um, when you're doing when you're doing it, you're doing it. Um, I'm I just gotta I just gotta get the stats up here because I mean they're unbelievable. I got I it. Mean, he had a uh, 18 carries and five receptions uh, against his former team. Yeah. Uh, so, and 102 total yards. Yeah, so two so two weeks in a row, uh, and he's got. And I can't argue the fact there's Jets coming up, and uh, so 
Oh, revenge game number two. Yeah, <laughs> revenge game number two. Yeah, yeah, he's bounced around the league. Uh, I guess I should be happy for him. I guess I, I guess I gotta, you know, um, give credit where credit's due and hold my hand up that you know maybe Kalen Balaj is finding his foot and and he's starting to do the job. And so Kalen Balaj has kind of like been the butt of uh, a lot of fantasy jokes over the years. Um, but um, he's coming out and doing it over the years. When I say over the years, I mean over the last couple of years. He hasn't he hasn't been in the league that long, so. Um, but yeah, uh, obviously the thing is, is that he lands on a team because the reason he's landing on these teams is because there's something coaches like about it. And maybe I'm not seeing it and maybe he hasn't like put in the full performance and maybe he's starting to show it now and maybe the Chargers is the right thing. And, um... With Justin Jackson, I think they put Justin Jackson on IR. I think you mentioned that. Uh, he's not on IR. He he he's hurt, but he's not on IR. He's not. He's hurt, but he's not on IR. So he's out anyway. And uh, he's eligible to play. Like if he's healthy, he'll play next week. Yeah, but Caleb Balazs looks effective. He's showing it in fantasy points. So by all means, go for it. Um, so I've talked about Caleb Balazs. Do you want to talk about anybody else before we go into our next segment? Hmm. Nah, I think we're okay. Uh, the other two guys we have listed here are Wayne Gallman and Naeem Hines, but I'm pretty sure those guys are owned in at least 50% of leagues. Mm. But at this point, they're not exactly sneaky pickups. So no. just just uh, add, add, add those two. They should be owned pretty much everywhere at this point. So Hines with a career game in, on Thursday. Yeah, so uh, yeah, Hines, Hines definitely uh, looks like he's finally coming into his own. I mean, it started off the season like it was going to be that way, and then he, I don't know, it just went into a big long drought. And, I don't know, Rivers decided to start playing football. And it's benefiting everybody, including Michael Pittman. So um, not so great about Jonathan Taylor, though, John. Yeah, Jonathan Taylor um, looks not good, I guess is the best way to describe it. Um, I wouldn't say he looks, well, kind of bad, but... Yeah, uh, Hines kind of ran out, took took that job. I don't know if he's big enough to con- to do that on a consistent basis, uh, but Taylor looks um, completely out of favor. Uh, looks like he, the coaches don't want to use him. They don't really trust him to be an every down guy, uh, whether it be pass protection or what have you. But he's, I think he had six carries or something like that this week, or something. It was bad. It was like a season low for carries, and I don't really see. Uh, any reason for the Colts to to pick it up this week? So if you have Taylor, I think you have to bench him. Yeah. So to make room, you got to make room on your roster to pick up any of these guys. And uh, I, if I have Emmanuel Sanders on my team, I am dropping Emmanuel Sanders. He hasn't done anything lately. He's been kind of off and on. And I mean, he had the he had a little bit of a streak going there. But um, Emmanuel Sanders just doesn't seem to be. Mm, and and with. Mm, well, here's here's this is this is kind of the funny thing. But he only got one target uh, with uh, Michael Thomas back, and Michael Thomas didn't do much. So I'm kind of wondering if Emmanuel Sanders is going to be uh, a thing anymore. But he will be. Um, he's not a he's not the greatest guy to drop. But he, I mean, if you need room and you have him and you're and you've got a stack bench, um, he's one. Of, he's definitely a, a candidate to drop. Um, of course, this depends a little bit on, on the status of Tracon Smith, but not really because the other guy, uh, Deontay Harris, is is playing very well and he's getting lots of work. So, but Emmanuel Sanders seems kind of like the odd guy out the, you know, I hate to say that about the veteran. He's a great player. He's always, he's been one of the greats. And I hate to say to drop Emmanuel Sanders because I've, I, I've really liked him. I've owned him in the past. He's, he's, he's always, you know, when he was on the Broncos, he was just fantastic. And, uh, even in his early days, this is going way back to the Pittsburgh days, you know, he, so I'm not saying he's completely washed, but I think you can move on from him. Yeah, I agree there. Uh, my drop is Bills running back Devin Singletary. Um, wow. With Zach Moss back, Singletary's been completely phased out. <laughs> he only has six carries over the last two weeks. Uh, he's been out carried by Zach Moss 16 to 6, out touched 19 to 10. And you can't even really hope for a touchdown with Singletary, a uh, cheap goal line touchdown with Singletary, just because Josh Allen is the goal line back for the Bills. So, yeah, there's nothing really you can say uh, for Singletary in defense of Singletary at this point. Uh, he's been phased out, beat up by another back. His quarterback is better at running the ball than he is. So, 
yeah, Singletary, uh, not worth holding on to anymore, especially with a buy coming up. All right, time for uh, mustache. Uh, who who are we stashing like uh, ahead of the game? Uh, getting a little bit of the head of the curve. Um, this is our spec ads segment. Uh, spec ad. I guess I will go. I have a Washington football team. Uh, Cam Sims, the other Sims for the Washington uh, football team. Um, didn't get a ton of run at all through uh, from weeks one to six. No more than ten percent of snaps, but. It- from weeks 7 to 10, uh, including their bye week, he has, uh, in the last three games, 88% of snaps, 74 and 94%. Uh, he's seeing the field a lot, and over the last two games, he's caught seven passes for 164 yards. Uh, for Washington, he's about fourth on the depth chart, depending on how you see Steven Sims and uh, Dontrell Inman when he comes back. But behind McLaurin, J.D. McKissick, and Logan Thomas, uh, Cam Sims looks like the wide receiver, too. Uh Decent big play guys. He had over 100 yards in week nine. So if he can build that rapport with Alex Smith, uh, it gives Washington just another weapon uh, through the air that they need because they can't keep checking down to J.D. McKissick 14 times a game. So, no, no, I, I was kind of wondering who the uh, the who plays on the other side of McLaurin, and so it's, it is him. Is it? I wasn't sure because I don't usually follow the wide receivers below uh, after McLaurin. Um, it's usually just McLaurin. normally there hasn't been a need to do so. McLaurin and everybody else, yeah. Well, you know, Haskins and uh, Kyle Allen. Kind of one-dimensional when it comes to uh, they don't they didn't tend to spread it around. Um, my God, now I got to qualify this. For, I, I have to know, Jono, uh, you you got the stats on this as uh, at hand. Maybe I hope is there a percentage owned on on Josh Reynolds of the of the Rams here? Yeah, uh, yep, yeah, I can look that up. Give me a second. Sure, because this isn't. He should have been picked up already. Really. Uh, he's at five percent. What? Five percent. Yeah, definitely got to pick him up. Um, like, look, the last three games, eight targets, nine targets. And this game against the Seahawks, 10 targets, 94 yards. He's got two touchdowns in the season. I mean, it just seems like since week six, um, he's been, uh, he's been lighting it up. And, um, I'm actually kind of, I, I wouldn't hit the panic button on, on Robert Woods, but, uh, or, or Cooper Cup, uh, especially Cooper Cup, but, um, Josh Reynolds is, is emerging a little bit it seems like john what do you think of this uh it's yeah i don't know it's kind of a weird thing uh he's out targeted robert woods over the last three games like you mentioned yeah and it's tough to see why maybe teams are keying in on woods a little bit more but reynolds has always kind of been you know that third receiver uh for the rams behind you know first those brandon cooks and then you know now it's robert woods and all this kind of stuff he's always been there as an injury fill-in but yeah. now he's you know looks like he's established and he's going to be getting consistent targets so especially in the rams offense he definitely needs to be uh owned that's a that's a good pick there okay and uh so we are into uh our final thoughts oh we're almost at what are we at 58 minutes and, and change and so we got a couple of minutes to uh uh well i tell you what we can do we can uh, i can tell you that the uh bears have the football and they lead 13 10 in the early or pardon mid third quarter and uh I see uh, Lamar Miller. Um, are we going to pick up Lamar Miller, depending on what happens in this game, too? No. We're not? No, because David Montgomery is going to be back next week. Uh, so okay. there's no there's no need to pick up Lamar Miller. Okay, fair enough. It's uh, Okay, so um, going into week 11. Week 11, the big game, Thursday night. Jono, it's, it's, you know, you've got your pair of guys. You've got, got Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins versus Russell and DK. So what's going to be, who's going to win? Pick a winner. Um... I don't know if I can pick a winner, but I know that this is going to end up being one of the highest scoring games. Uh, the Seahawks defense is bad and the Cardinals offense is good. So whoever wins, they're going to end up winning 45, 42 or something crazy like that. I'll call the Cardinals just because recency bias and I'm much, much happier watching the Cardinals because Kyler Murray is very, very fun to watch. Yeah, no 12th man. Yeah, that too. It's a real shame we're not playing each other in the F6P League, though. I wish we were for this game. I just I just went to check. We are not playing each other. Well, I think we played each other uh, way, way back. Week two. But I'm sure the way it's trending, it seems like we're going to meet each other in the playoffs. Ugh, worrying times. I hope... Uh... 
Well, it should be a good one. I don't know if we if we do meet each other in the playoffs. You know, you just never know how these things go. But uh, I will say this though: you're you're the you you've got the hot team right now. It feels it feels doesn't feel good when you don't have the hot team anymore. <laughs> it feels like you're sort of like ah, it's just, it's like, I'm declining. <laughs> but I'm not. I got a good team. I guess uh, you know, going through a bit of a bad patch at the moment. And you're going through a good patch. But uh, all the, all the power to you. I looked at your team. Your team is just studly, very studly looking team. And I don't remember drafting half this team, so I'll take the, I'll take my uh, I'll, I'll give credit to my brain for this one. I don't remember drafting half this team. No, I, I know how you feel. It's the, but I, uh, but, yeah, you're having a good year. It's good. good to see. So, enough about that. Uh, thank you for joining us on the Fantasy Edge, and I hope you all have a uh, good uh, week 11 this week. And don't forget uh, to check out John O's uh, waiver wear article tomorrow. Uh, it is tomorrow is it Jono? yeah yep yeah, i just yeah, scheduled it ah right so ah so you'll be able to get a uh people who listen to the podcast can listen to us and you can check out uh, his words of wisdom on the website fantasy sixpack.net see you next week on the fantasy edge everybody take care the show.